here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is moral compass. And um, we're going to chat about how we establish our own moral compass or how we know whether we're in alignment with it and also how we can navigate when we're confronted by folks that don't share the same moral compass and and um, dealing with those dilemmas. So it should be an interesting conversation. Good morning. Good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. So good to have you joining us this morning and welcome to everybody else who's joining us. Um, we are going to be talking today about moral compass. And um, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables us to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, moral compass. Um, I think we tend to operate from the assumption that other people operate from similar assumptions, um, that other people have similar um, moral compass or sim similar uh, levels of integrity. And it's not always the case. Um, I was having a conversation. Good morning, Bernadette. You made it. Great to have you here with us this morning. We're talking about moral compass. So, um, and, and really integrity. And how do we operate with integrity when we are confronted by other people that don't share the same um the same integrity or the same definition of integrity or the same moral code shall we say so um this has come about because i've had a couple dealings with folks in business who were rather unscrupulous and um it's been very interesting to be experiencing their lack of integrity. Of course, that's based on my spectrum, on my uh, perception, um, my scale of, of what is has integrity, how integrity is evidenced or how, how we live in integrity. And so it's, made me be looking at myself to determine uh, how to conduct myself in the face of these challenges. So Bernadette says, our integrity comes with our views and our own journey. Yeah, so one of the definitions of integrity is wholeness. And we can also consider it integration, you know, where, where, we have 
a, a unity within ourselves and alignment within ourselves. Um, and I guess, again, going to this notion that we tend to assume that there's a universal, you know, like this notion of an integrity. My inclination is to think that the way that these these people have been behaving in business um, lacks integrity, um, that it lacks a moral compass, that that their behavior is um, immoral. And I also recognize that where I'm coming from is comparing their behavior to behavior that I would evidence, you know, that, 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 um, I'm, I'm judging them based on my metrics. Um, and it doesn't matter. Right. So Bernadette says, but it's immoral, but is it immoral because it's not our belief? Well, that's a really good question. That's a really, really, that is the question. Um, and I guess according, so I signed this contract, the contract has some very interesting clauses that when you read it initially are easy to overlook because they're written in a sort of friendly, um, in a friendly way. Uh, and they're actually quite insidious clauses that um so for instance one one of the clauses is if you ask for a refund before you go through this whole complete process uh then you lose the opportunity you, you lose the right to that refund. You lose the guarantee. And so what happened for me is over and over and over, I had multiple conversations and email communications, and it became really clear that this wasn't going to work. Had I remembered, which I didn't, that there was that clause in the contract, I would not have said, I, I just, I want a refund when I did, because I had reached the limit of my, to my tolerance. And because I asked for that refund before the specified process had been completed, they are uh, contractually um, right. They are contractually entitled to revoke my right to a refund, which they've done. And um, I asked when that happened, I said, well, okay, so let's go back to where we were and pretend that I didn't ask for the refund and let's go through the process. And they said, no, you asked for a refund and that voided the guarantee the 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 ability to qualify for a refund so the thing is that it was really clear that it wasn't a good fit that it wasn't going to be a good fit that we weren't going to get to a place of reconciliation and um still that they it's kind of they are within their legal right so it's a gotcha clause clause I mean, the guy that I requested the refund from could have said, hey, you might not want to do that because it'll void your guarantee, but he didn't do that. And um, I have been pursuing it to uh, to appeal to their higher nature to say, hey, this isn't a good fit. It wasn't a good fit from the beginning. And this is kind of a gotcha clause. And, um, you know, do you, are you willing to sort of put your money where your mouth was initially? 
So, um, so Bernadette says, to me, it would be a matter of what course, for example, you're taking. Would it have been a situation that may have changed your point of view? Well, so um, there, it was the 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 agreement was that they would provide me. With, it was up for marketing. It was um, hiring an organization that was going to teach me a strategy for marketing. Um, and their approach to it was not an approach that I was interested in. And so um, that became clear early on, and they were not in any way keeping their promise that they were going to be creating a plan that was specific to me and my needs and my business. So um, essentially they have one program and it's, it wasn't made clear up front the nature of it anyway. So the, the thing is that now they've ghosted me. Now they won't communicate with me. Meantime, they've got a whole bunch of money from me and they're not even communicating. They had given me three options. One was to walk away from my money which was a substantial amount of money to um, continue with their program and find, you know, develop a marketing plan that would be satisfactory and continue. And the third plan was to put the program on hold for up to a year so that I could come back to it when I was ready. And so the thing is that there's no trust there's no um, no communication at this point except except coming from me. And I'm 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 rather appalled and talking about integrity, looking at what is within my integrity, how do I follow up on this? Do I let it go and walk away? Do I fight it? Do I expose this to other people so that they're alert and aware? Do I find other people who are aggrieved in the same way that I am and pursue this and go after these people for for what feels very much to me like um, like misleading business practices? And so this notion of integrity for me, integrity is really a big deal for me. And feeling into it, like what is in alignment for me with my values, with my North Star, with my moral compass, what is appropriate action and where do I want to put my energy? And so I don't think that I'm alone. So Bernadette says, so almost a malpractice issue. That's what it feels like to me, you know, that misleading, misleading business practices, you know, like saying, oh, this is, we guarantee your satisfaction or we'll refund your money. And we will develop something that's specific to you that you're going to be excited with or will refund your money. Well, that's not true. They they have built their contract in such a way that they have a whole bunch of outs. Uh, one of, and interestingly, one of the things that is in their contract, if you threaten us, we can fire you. If you curse at us, we can fire you. If you if we deem you to be uncoachable we can fire you once you've made, once you've agreed to this contract. So um, Bernadette says, I'd be joining forces with others who are like-minded. Yeah, so like-minded in terms of having uh, been aggrieved and, and who want to make others aware um, and make others aware that they need to be cautious. 
you know, one of the things that I can do is to say is to say to them, look, I'm not walking away quietly. Um, uh, Bernadette says those terms aren't defined enough. It, well, so that's part of the thing with the contract. You know, it's got these gotcha phrases where kind of at any point uh, they can just walk away with your money. And to me, while they may be legally able to enforce these terms, it looks to me like it's really deceptive. That's what the word is, deceptive business practices. And, and really not not moral I, I, to me it's a license to steal and that and i feel like i've been robbed and um i i have a certain inclination to to go after them you know to to make it known that while they appear to be this friendly kind of service organization, in fact, they're predators. You know, this is predatory. If you don't, if you don't tow the line, um, to it in um, in following their uh, the letter of the law, it was almost like. I, I felt like I was pushed to the point of absolute frustration where I would violate the um, the the clause of don't ask for a refund. I didn't remember that that was there. Had I remembered it was there, I never would have done that and jeopardized my money. I wouldn't have done that, but I did. And so it's a gotcha because it was clear. Now, so like in my business, there are people that I know I would not be a great coach for. I know that it would not be a good fit and that in fact, it could be detrimental to do the work that I do with people for certain people. And despite the, the their eagerness, I will turn them away because that's not a good fit because I want to be able to serve people well. And so because I have that, because I have that um, principle, I assume, and you know what they say about assuming, um, that other people share that. Rosalind says those terms are not defined enough. Um, well, the, you know, the terms... I think that they might be defined enough to be argued in law is the challenge, right? I'm not sure which terms you're talking about. I'm thinking the terms in the contract. Bernadette says bully mentality. They have comply with our rules or we will try to discredit you. Well, or or we will at the very least um, dismiss you, right? So this, you know, initially I was enraged absolutely enraged at the lack of of integrity and incredibly frustrated what i called integrity you know i call it integrity to be if you're presenting yourself as a service business to be a service business to be in service not to take advantage of loopholes that you kind of build into something and so, like, I have this moral outrage, and I'm noticing that, and I, and I'm, at the same time, I'm also recognizing, clearly, these guys have had experience that let them add these gotcha phrases into their contract, right? Clearly, they have designed this contract because they know that other people are going to are going to get really frustrated 
and and say that's it i'm done and so but maybe even before they get to this whole marketing plan thing um so that they built that in the contract so that they can keep the money clearly they've had people curse at them because they were so frustrated so they built that into the contract clearly they've had people threaten them because they built that into the contract it wasn't just ha ha oh isn't that funny who's going to threaten and curse at you they push people to the point to do that which is crazy you know these things that you don't i didn't see i didn't take seriously i didn't question when i saw these things in the contract you know like if you curse at us if you threaten us and it's like well why would that be in the contract specifically if you're not coachable meaning if you don't do what we tell you to do all these gotchas that are masked or masquerading maybe not maybe they're not masquerading they're right there in the open you know but but in the context of a contract that looks really congenial and and friendly like why would anybody threaten somebody why would anybody curse at you unless you're creating a situation that drives people to the brink of their sanity so uh, Bernadette says, sorry, have to go. So happy to have finally connected. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Bernadette, so good that you connected. And thanks for participating. Have a wonderful day. Um, anyway, I, I, I find this is sort of a moral dilemma for me because I don't want to be putting my energy and attention on something that is negative. And at the same time, I'm I'm kind of I I do have a degree of moral outrage about a company that can use a contract like this to really abuse people and take advantage of people. Now there are people that go through this program that are very happy and getting results and are fine with their approach. I'm not Fine with their approach. And in fact, one other person that I know who um, actually went through the process of approving the plan is now looking at quitting because they are really not fine with the approach. And, and they're also in a position where they need, they're going to end up losing their money. And it, it, it seems to me that around money, people often lose their way, lose their morality. You know, the, the, we've all heard the, um, the phrase, oh, it's just business. So if it's just business, I can justify being completely bereft of any principles. It's just, it's just crazy what we can justify in the name of money and ha have show so little uh, moral fortitude or, or anyway. So I go from, and I, and I wonder if you've ever experienced something like this where you wrestle with yourself because on one hand, you know, it's like, take your lumps, move on, and don't put your attention on something that's, that's negative. Uh, the question is, is it negative to, to be calling out something that isn't, that, that we feel is unjust? really interesting you know it's like what when what will spur us to activism what does it take to be 
inspired to take action. And I'm I'm posing that as a question to you because it's something that I'm wrestling with myself. Uh because I am quite certain that myself and this other person are not alone in having this experience. And, and part of me wants to make them pay, you know, not, not uh, either pay me back or, or reap the consequences. And so I'm just wondering what, what, is your take what do you think how do you navigate these situations i've been wrestling with this since december actually and it's it's been very very challenging and i haven't i haven't come to a reconciliation and the big thing is that in my moral compass it's like Right now, the true north is kind of bouncing around like what is the most appropriate action? So I I like I said, I know I'm not alone in facing these kinds of considerations. And I wonder how you handle them. I wonder how you address these kinds of circumstances and how how you convert it for yourself in some way or another to a a lesson something that we can use something that we can create as as a positive as a contribution to ourselves and in our lives because that that's really what I'm looking at very much too is what can I learn from this besides reading between the lines of a contract, not just reading the contract, but reading between the lines. Rosalyn says, seeking fulfillment elsewhere, walk away is one option. The other is to go down the path to challenge them in the legal setting. Well, legally, I can't really challenge them. I can challenge them in the court of public opinion. So a friend of mine suggested uh, sending a tip to the New York Times so that they could do an expose kind of story on them, uh, because I guarantee you that this isn't the only company that has shady sorts of operations in this way. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an interesting, interesting path and and definitely walking away is one option. I I'm not willing to walk away until I feel complete. And I don't know what that looks like. It might be something internal. It might be something having to do with action with them. I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, an expose. So anyway, that's it for today. I'm sharing my moral dilemmas so that we could all look at those things that challenge us in our lives together. So until next time, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I so appreciate you and the opportunity to uh, find our way meandering through uh, the challenges and, um, and opportunities of life. So until next time, so much love to you.